Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Hope you're doing well today. I am doing well. Thank you for caring. <laughs> uh, it's a rainy day here on the East Coast. But from what I know of the weather, the national weather, I don't think it's nearly as rainy as it is on the West Coast. So we definitely send our thoughts and prayers with all those that are in need of shelter and sanctuary on that side of the nation and that homes and things and lives are protected and that they can weather the storm, you know? It's amazing how, like, on, in some parts of the world, rain is just rain, but just carried over into another place. It's like, you know, freaking state of emergency, you know? So I hope Mother Nature is graceful. I haven't seen any, any latest, um, any updates lately today at all actually so I don't know where it is in the storm or if it's the break because I know there was supposed to be like a pause and then it's coming back over the weekend or something like that but um yeah either way I hope all is well as well as it can be um okay so I was in prayer I'm going to share this off the top because I don't know I just feel like it's important but I was in prayer as I always am, even though you don't see it before I push the record. And I was just kind of thinking, well, I was praying about a couple things, but one of the things that came up was um, me considering the concepts and the message that's titled on the thumbnail, Menace to Society, right? Which I actually watched back today. so. It was kind of coming up in my spirit. Not that I was praying about it, but what I was praying about made it kind of come up, if you understand. And um, I was like contemplative. You know, I literally asked the question out loud as to, because basically if you haven't watched the message, I definitely suggest that you do. Like I said, it's titled Menace to Society on the Thumbnail. And I thought it was really interesting. It was deep, but it was interesting. But what I realized when I was watching back is that I was relating it more to it being some type of um, substance dependency or even like um, obsession of power, per se. Um, well, an obsession of, you know, prosperity, you know, being having wealth and money and affluence and even access. And I touched on a little bit of the power dynamic Truly, I did, and sufficiently, for, even for my liking. But it, it was clear to me that that's really more of the pronunciation of the obsession. It's, it has manifested itself as a substance dependency, even abuse, or, you know, other very physical, tangible obsessions for possession. But the core of it is the obsession for what other people possess. And I was like, what is that? Like, what is that spirit? Can I get a word for it? But I didn't get a word. I got an acronym, which is kind of a double, maybe even triple entendre. And it was OPP, other people's power. That's what the obsession, the heightened obsession is for is because where, and this is on every scale, globally, nationally, universally, um, generally, independently, societally. It's like as people have be begun to reclaim their power and actually protect it more intentionally, it's much less vulnerable to be poached or manipulated or um, monopolized, you know, there's that's the the balancing act that's happening universally and so it's incited this like frantic obsession to reclaim what ultimately was not even 
<laughs> you know, was not even of their original possession, those that are, are most ambitious for it. But because they become so dependent on operating off of OPP, other people's power, whether as a complete um, sub supplement to their own or as an additive to what they already possessed, there's causing like this great imbalance in people from a spiritual perspective, of course, from the source, but it's expressing itself as a physical and I almost said chemical imbalance, but a physical and mental imbalance more or less because people have been used to operating in a certain way for so long that they, it's like, like I said about the pills and that reading, their bodies, really their minds, their energetic um, minds are telling them that they need it to survive which is more or less illusionary. If, if there's any physical necessity, it's off of surely what was able to be tangibilized. Um, I know that's not a word, but what was able to be manifested on account of this, um, what's, the, what's the word? Like, um, like when athletes are, What's that term when athletes are on steroids or something? Somebody actually, I saw somebody in the news. Oh, I think it was a, oh, I think it was um Tristan Thompson that he just got busted for, um, what's it called? Uh, enhanced performance enhancement substances. So people have been able to use other energies to enhance their their manifestation performance instead of relying on their own and building their own you know, getting in the in the spiritual gym and doing their own uh, strengthening regimens. They've just been taking the shortcut, stare, uh, juicing up on other people's energy. And now that those roads have been blocked or some people have been busted or, you know, it's not quite, it's almost like the body is having an adverse reaction in some cases to these substance abuses. Um it's materialized into something more physical and now people are ha are trying to find a supplement for that very spiritual sustenance you know so and oh, oh by the way OPP the origination the original um the the origination of is that right is that right that doesn't sound right i think so that that acronym originated from a Naughty by Nature song, which is titled Other People's Property. But in this case, it's Other People's Power. And that power is translatable in many different ways. It could be talents, it could be gifts, it could be actual fortunes. It's more spiritual inheritance um, and like certain intangible abilities that some, some that were in possession of it organically weren't even quite aware they were which also came up in my reading if not that one the one before that when we started I think it was yesterday when we started with the page of wands and the queen of wands people were in possession of powers that they didn't even know they had in some cases because they were being blocked and siphoned out to other other forces and in some ways because they're um they were being suppressed in such a way from all of this, all of the distractive stimuli to keep them from elevating the keep us keep us from elevating the frequency to be able to fully activate that power force, you know. So it lied dormant for quite some time or undiscovered. Um, or as I said, it was even a power that you didn't even know was a power because you didn't revere it as such. You just kind of like, it was just matter of fact, oh yeah, I can do that, that's nothing. And, uh, and other people were very much obliged to help you feel like, oh yeah, you're right, that's nothing, that's worthless, while the whole time they were taking it for themselves. So, you know, it's unfortunate how the tables are turning and people are finding themselves like spiritual crackheads out here, you know, you know, and it, in that regard, in the, in this, in the energy that I'm using it, 
it's with less empathy and grace than I would someone that really has a substance abuse issue that is from more or less like life circumstances that, you know, their choice that have influenced their choices one way or another, purely just really um, self-affliction. Well, I'm, what I'm speaking against is those that were in their more or less in their right mind, at least at the onset of their plan to be leeches, more or less, vampires at worst, um, that knew exactly what they were doing. They were not, it, it may have um, it eventually become a habit that was hard to kick and now a dependency, but the initiation of it all was very self-gratifying and um, for the purposes of their own person, personal satisfaction and sensationalism. Nothing pure about it is what I'm getting to the point of. I, I don't have as much grace and sympathy for the outcome of those individuals um, because of, first of all, the initial motivation of the intention and also knowing that there were plenty of signs along the way um, that ultimately were guiding people out of that state of being so that they could make some different choices and have a different outcome. So it's like they were being, there was an exit sign at every pit stop down the rabbit hole. It's like you could exit here or you can keep going, keep on going. And for the most part, a lot of people opted to keep on going. And yes, all of the temptations and um, the, t the temptations became harder to withstand at every level, for sure, because there was more to gain and more to lose, you know, at every point. And of course, the fear of being exposed, but ultimately, um, for the most part, outside of actual substance dependency, which some kind of maybe came along with the lifestyle and the territory or, or found its way to it. These were people that were, that made the choice to indulge over and over again, more less at the detriment to themselves and more in favor of the casualty of others, knowing that there could be no fair exchange. It's one thing to have a substance abuse, a substance dependency, and at worst, maybe you steal some stuff out of your folks' house to sell or whatever. Like, yeah, that affects who you, you know, affects your immediate circle. But it's another thing to go kill a family member. And a lot of people were literally committing spiritual larceny and assault and, um, you know, outright murder and in some cases rape, you know, sorry for the triggers, but a lot of the most capital crimes um, were being committed in the spiritual sense because for the most part, those that were um, in offense did never really saw the day coming where they would be exposed or their plots would be unveiled or that they would be stripped of the power and the protection and the um, access that they were privy to in order to keep operating in the systems that they were. So that day of reckoning has come it will not stop until it has reached a level of balance for all that has occurred for and against whomever in every sense of justice. <laughs> so even now, it still makes sense. If I mean, if some people are so far gone in their addiction, in the spiritual and actual sense, definitely in the spiritual even, it's become so concrete, so uh, abrasive now that they almost feel like they couldn't stop if they wanted to. And that, that part sucks because that's where more of the demonic possession takes place where different spirits are now taking residence in people's um, energetic being and almost like 
zombifying people, you know, where you're almost on autopilot to things that you wouldn't want to do in your most organic state of being. But now it's like something is working for you, something that you can't contain, control. It's, it's almost like you're a prisoner in your own body to some degree. That's that's happening out here. That's definitely happening. I don't really know what's the cure for that other than, you know, I feel like that's where the expressions of like revelations comes in where some people are just covered to withstand that trial and tribulation, you know, that some people still, even at what seems like rock bottom, are covered to survive that and perhaps live to tell the story or lead other people out of it in some way, shape, or form. And perhaps some are destined to succumb to it. I don't know what gets to be what any more than anybody else kind of really knows their fate, you know, whether it be on one end of the spectrum or the other. But from my foresight, it is it's going to be it's going to have to be a way through the tribulation before there is a triumph. And just on sheer um, basis of universal law, spiritual law of creating balance for the occurrences and offenses that have taken place. So the only thing that we can truly do, and we as in whomever you feel, you know, you feel included in that statement as, or in that identity as, is protect yourself by way of your own integrity and, um, you know, continuing to honor your righteous path with, you know, uh, grace, you know, grace for yourself and grace for others. Like, even though I'm saying like I have less sympathy and empathy for those on a certain frequency, it's not that I feel like I could discard them, you know, spiritually either, you know, but I certainly don't feel any um, obligation toward anyone at this point at all, you know, except for the seed that came through my body to continue to cover him and guide him, train him up in the way that he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from it or find his way back to it. And that is so all-consuming, knowing that the next generation is our future. They are, they are going to be creating the world that we live in. They already are, as a matter of fact, that I don't have time or energy to overexert on anyone that's not willing to take accountability and responsibility for themselves. You know, that literally doesn't exhibit a desire to want to heal and be whole. My energy is reserved for a different assignment. So that's my integrity, you know, and when you step out of whatever it is that you feel called, designed, divine to do, that's when you put yourself in the line of fire and perhaps in harm's way. But as long as you're staying focused and uh, steady on that path, you really don't have anything to worry about. This is a season of reaping in every way, shape, and form. And if you've been planting seeds um, for fruits of the Spirit, then you shall manifest that produce abundantly so. I truly believe that. All right. So anyway, let's just cut these cards. I don't remember how much I cut them, if I did at all, to be honest, because I didn't talk so much. I didn't mean to say all that. So forgive me, but I hope you hear me holla if you do. <laughs> all right. For the here we go. OPP. Somebody holding on to other people's property or they may be holding on to what little they have left for themselves or of themselves. Um, what did I hear somebody say about this card, the Four of Pentacles? Um, like almost an insecurity. I had never really heard that about. Now, I can't remember if it was upright or invert, um, if it was upright or reverse, but it kind of, I, when I heard that, I was like, hmm, okay, I could definitely see that almost someone kind of like hiding themselves 
behind their money. Oh, okay. Like their insecure, maybe the insecurity is that is from the exposure of what, you know, this person's raw nature, the four of pentacles. It can be in the up in the in the highest frequency someone that's conservative with their resources, but it it can easily veer into someone being a little bit cheap or just um, a a bit paranoid about what they have left. You know, it's not the two of pentacles where you physically have to juggle, but with the four, it's like somebody that's that is financially insecure. Let's say it like that. They may have they have may have enough to survive, but there's something here where they don't quite have as much as they used to, or enough to make them feel comfortable. So they're they're counting every dollar, every dime, everyone that's coming in and out because of some type of fear or anxiety about not having enough, you know, like your own, you could own, and, and it, you know, like they say, just being, just being just one paycheck away from homelessness. And, you know, actually he's outside and there's a city behind him. So maybe so, maybe there, I'm actually speaking to some, some financial insecurity here. But again, as, I, as I've been saying with these pentacle energies, I've been seeing them much more translatable to power and life force and creativity even than it is money. Because, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, we're moving away from a society that's fueled on money as we know it. Energy is the currency. What can you do? What power do you have? What talent do you have? What skill do you have? We're going to be bartering energy as a currency in the future. Now, how that gets to manifest itself as some different physical currency or, or begins to maybe reinflate or reignite the dollar or whatever the dollar ends up being, remains to be seen, but there's coming a time when you are going to be a walking wallet, <laughs> you know, so take that as you will. And it may be sooner than later. And that, and that's the thing, right? So here's the four of wands. And that's the thing, right? Because if people have been used to building fortunes off of other people's power, and not really um, advancing their own personal portfolio, if you will, that is the the franticness that's begun to sweep, you know, across the land because it's like if you don't have much to exchange or much to spend, and you don't have access to the banks that you used to you kind of in poverty or you at least afraid of it, afraid of how you're going to be left to fend for yourself in some way or afraid that when what little you do have runs out, then what? How are you going to pay for that house? How are you going to keep that car? How are you going to maintain this lifestyle that you have created for yourself off of what? Other people's power other people's property, other people's prosperity, <laughs> other people's partners. You can put a whole lot of different P's in there, to be honest, because people have been just ha taking liberties with all of it. You know, other people's productivity, even with the corporations relying on manpower, they're trying to quickly switch over more to AI and more, you know, um, technologically supported industries, but it'll be seen still that there can be efficiency advancements there, but you still need human beings, you know? So even still, you're going to have to, yeah, exactly. The, um, the moon card here is like, you still want to need actual people 
And the moon card here is like some, something mystical, something obscure. What's that here? Let me see. What's on the other side of this moon? And under the four of pent, under the four of pentacles, it feels like some like people are that people are still trying to conceal or hide mm, their net worth. So people are still trying, like they're trying to hold on to, and we're, I'm talking more of this lower frequency of where I started, which obviously there was a reason for me to start there. And sometimes, like I say, often the four of, of wands gives me the energy of people that want to look like they're doing well. You know, everything's fine here. Everything is awesome. And when you get up close, like this is a very distant view, but when you get up close, there may be more behind the scenes going on in that house or going on in this establishment, this environment, this community of sorts. It's like people are trying to keep up. Yeah, here's the insecurity. And as I said, like almost hiding himself from the potential of exposure, maybe even trying to conceal some dark <clears throat> roots from being exposed. You know, some dark dealings. There we go. That have been, been hidden, hidden truths is what is given. Trying to hold up to a, keep up appearances for as long as they possibly can. Because once, like say, it's like, I don't know why I'm hearing this, but the whole Kylie Jenner fiasco when they said she was a billionaire, billionaire, the first, the youngest billionaire, right, in Forbes. Then it was like, well, hold up, is she really a billionaire, you know? So it's given that some of these, mm, that's interesting, that some of these um, pedestal establishments and entities, whether they be people, organizations, groups, families, even perhaps since we're talking about Kardashian, there's going to be, they're holding on to this face of, prominence of fortune even like everything in entertainment is a complete illusion like one hand washes the other the kardashians aren't even truly as wealthy as they probably have paid to print on on paper you know they they're a face they're a name they're an image they draw in a certain um a certain level of customer clientele viewership ever you know the stuff that ever advertisers more or less feed off of so they can go and get endorsements for high-end brands and companies and things of that sort that can prop themselves themselves up as wealth even if it's just for the cameras or for a time and the exchange is more or less even because the flock of of energy here we go again that they can bring to a particular brand or an awareness or a business or whatever they attach themselves to is valuable enough for now is the point but that that's depreciating little do we know behind the scenes is probably much harder for them to ink certain deals and wager certain contracts more than what they they still present themselves to kind of be like you know this feminine first family of fortune of sorts when in actuality not only is their social um value probably depreciating their their uh financial value probably is too and also probably their familiar val familial value like the consistency of their family structure on the inside you know not wishing it on them and I'm and I don't even really mean to whip whip on them as like a poor example because do what you do get it how you live for sure but I'm just using that to show the shift the evolution that's happening right before our eyes but because as I said 
particularly in entertainment and Hollywood, we're always being projected this illusion that everything is awesome, everything is fine, you should want to be a part of this. You 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 don't you wish you could be here? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me type vibes, <laughs> you know? When it's like, mm, is it is it awesome? Is your girlfriend really that hot? <laughs> Speaking of which, the King of Cups, and I did all that straight in it, but let me see what the King of Cups is looking at. Because the King of Cups is a Mr. Loverman. <laughs> Shabba. <laughs> oh, and even that has implications because we all know Shabba Ranks used to be more old school references. So forgive me because I'm very much so a 90s baby, a 90s. 90s kid, I should say. 80s baby, 90s kid. But let's see. What's this? Oh, okay, Mr. Levelman. And I was just about to say, we all know that um, Shaba used to get used to get clown for really being unattractive. <laughs> it's like, are you really Mr. Levelman, Shaba? Are you? Like, do you really get the ladies like you say you do? That could be this expression here because this is like the moon energy, these some deep, dark emotions. Maybe this is the, ooh, not again. Are we here on this? Because, oh, yeah, because I have said, which is true, that the four of swords can sometimes be a same-sex couple. So it could be, as I'm saying all this this stuff about, you know, appearances and projections of truth, it could be somebody's happy life, happy wife is really more so uh, his and his situation that someone is trying to keep secretive because they're afraid of the depreciation on their brand if that truth were to be exposed. There could be that too. Now that's just a whole nother sideline story. Is that really about to be the focal point here? I hope not. <laughs> I sure hope not. All right, let's see. Let's let's move on. We got the King of Cups. We got the King of Swords. Now, what I will say, I mean, you can't really get the same suits with the Kings. It's either going to be this or that, no matter what. But the King of Cups is somebody that is very emotionally engaged, while the King of Swords is someone that is very emotionally detached. So maybe someone is more invested in whatever this connection is than the other it feels more professional and prescriptive for the king of swords than it is emotional and intimate for the king of cups well, that's a recipe for disaster that's definitely cause for an energy where things are just not as they appear to be hmm Mm. But the King of Cups is under this four pentacles. So maybe it's like, I feel like a, a challenge here because the King of Cups is looking at the King of Swords, but the King of Swords is looking forward. So just as he is with the four, I mean, it doesn't have to be him, but just as the four of pentacles is looking forward, it's like somebody cares more about the logistics of a relationship, what it can do for them or not, how it affects their brand, how it affects their sponsorships, how it affects their bottom line, their reputation, their their um, their appearances, whatever. Like they care more about the facts and figures than actually being in love or engaged in any type of intimate connection. And the challenge feels like that could be the threat of exposure here because maybe somebody's tired of being an employee or a subordinate even. Mm, a subordinate. Because the King of Swords can be like an executive or like CEO or some high level figure or... Um, yeah 
<laughs> like maybe the king of cups is like a stay at home dad or <laughs> say a stay at home partner in some way and the king of swords is the one out i don't know like make get making the bacon as they say mm, interesting and, and maybe they're tired of being maybe they're being hidden in some way and at home they maybe they're tired of the relationship being a secret and they ooh, okay they want something to change should i put this up top oh oh i don't even know like i'm gonna put this down here because i don't have much more time before we get too lengthy sorry i was chit-chatting so much Ugh. either something is about to end maybe this illusion or the relationship altogether or somebody i just i heard crime of passion that's what i heard and if you look at the king of cups hand it's like he has a cup but he also has like this scepter it almost looks like a bludgeon and hell he got a sword oh lord lord it could go either way. Either he could be so, so um, frantic about it's given like, like, um, like emotionally unhinged with the moon card. Certainly, maybe like somebody trying to hold on to what last little marbles they got left, what last patience they got left. It's, it's given unhinged. And maybe due to the circumstances which have become more um, more oppressive or there's been more pressure, you know, once upon a time they could live a certain lifestyle or just live life in a certain type of way. You know, money makes everything better, more or less, you know, in some in some ways, but when you really see what's going on when the funds get low. And then it's like people start to get impatient or start to get agitated. And he's trying to figure out a way forward. That's where his mind is. But he's trying to figure, like, he's feeling like I've been here holding it down. And yet I'm still in the shadows. Like, what's up? Type of, it, this something. Mm. Wow. OPP, maybe somebody cheated other people's property which was the premise of the song terrible terrible toxic ass song <laughs> in its original form but that's what it was Ooh, somebody's working either working overtime under the moonlight or somebody's working on some secret plan to end something what is this about? Hold on now. It's, it could be like a lover's quarrel that turns ugly. Ooh. Yeah, this is... Page of Pentacles is feeling like some message of exposure or something like this is the pentacle that he was trying to hold on to for dear life. And it's like, uh-uh, I'm telling it. Maybe that could incite the, the battle or, you know, some, some violence of sorts. Or just could just put an end to the relationship and an end to the secrecy. It could be that too. The death card doesn't have to be final, final. It could just be the end of this secret partnership. Oh, but you know what? I did post a long order and it was so random how I came across that. I came across that clip on YouTube about the, um, the homosexual murder ring. It was like a real, I mean, it was season five of Law, Law and Order SVU. I think they all the way up to like 25 or something now. I don't know, like something crazy. 
but um, I saw it and I was so intrigued by it that I, I have Peacock. So I went and actually found the episode. Haven't watched Law and Order in years, but I was like, I want to see the rest of this. And it was so good. It was like, whoa. Um, it was season five, episode, I want to say episode 20. It was actually called Low Down instead of like down low and it was all about like men on the down low that were engaged in, in this like secret poker game of sorts where they basically were just like intimate with each other and they all had wives or had other feminine relationships that they were committed to but this is what they did every Wednesday night you know they got together to play poker and they play poker, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Poke him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and then this one of the guy's co-workers, they were both DAs. And um one of the guys in the in the in the group had another affair on the sideline with one of the attorneys. He was like an assistant DA, and they were both in whatever regards, they were uh co-workers and colleagues, I should say. And he was white though. The all the all the men in this ring were black. And the white guy started falling in love with the lawyer. And basically the premise of it all, which you may even see from beginning to end through clips on the on the community tab uh post, is that he killed him. You know, he, he killed him because he was pressing him to leave his wife, leave, you know, his his up, you know, the appearances of his happy little life and more or less risk it all to be with him for love. And you know what? King of Swords is kind of like lawyer vibes too. It could be that air sign energy. But yeah, he was in love with him. And damn, and then yeah, this is kind of telling the story. That's crazy. They were co-workers having a secret affair and he want, he was offering him, you know, this... He had He was basically kind of pressuring him to take his offer of love and you know and it it got it got um it, it became threatening because the other black guys were feeling like his emotional fragility was ultimately going to put them in jeopardy of being exposed to so he had one guy who was like this huge big ass football player ex-football player go talk to him and at first you thought that it was him that actually did the deed but he just kind of went to kind of like talk him out of it maybe even um intimidate him out of being too aggressive and kind of falling back but in the end this guy was so desperate that he risked all his kid I mean, well he risked his entire life to to kill this man just because of the fear of being well, in the end, he said, I didn't want to face my sexuality, like face that I was gay. So he kept all this facade, then ended up going to prison on account of murder and was outed anyway, at least to his family and stuff, and lost his entire livelihood on account of the impulse decision, the fear of having to actually live in his unadulterated truth, you know, as it is. Um, and then, sideline, what really was the kicker was that, come to find out, the lover, white dude, that was, you know, in love with the black guy, had HIV. He was HIV positive and was hiding it from insurance, paying in cash for all of his medications. The, the guy, the lover, didn't know. And then he ended up passing it to his wife. And in the end, she was so forgiving and so loving and, you know, she was like, she was snot in tears. It was like some of the best acting I had seen uh, other than the main characters on there. But she was snot in tears saying like, you know, I understand I'm hurt, but I forgive you. But what I cannot forgive is if you don't own up to the responsibility of your actions, basically for him to take the plea for the murder. So, and in my opinion, look, here you go here. In my opinion, he actually got off quite easy because I think he got like seven years or something like that for like man two when he probably would have would have damn near been going away for life 
in a different vein and also from a different um, authority. Like if he hadn't been a part of the justice system, like if that was some regular schmegular, he probably would have been in, literally in jail for life. But this is him. This is the story. And why? Why is this important? <laughs> I don't even know if I want to keep going because my incense already burned out. Mm. Let's see. Should I keep going? No. That's a hard stop for me with the Knight of Swords. Like, this is that aggressive, uh, abrasive, very entitled energy. This is probably the energy that he was in when he committed the crime because he was so afraid of being outed and being exposed if he was in his true king of swords mind then he would have been more level-headed more logical more um you know maybe even more strategic because his whole get up you know to commit the crime in the first place wasn't even all that brilliant you know he tried to stage it as if um a prostitute more or less had serviced him and then left him for dead, robbed him and left him for dead in the car. But the the credit cards that he supposed that the prostitute supposedly had taken never got used. The gym bag, the the lipstick that he used to put around the condom, sorry for the triggers, to stage it as if it was like some act of affair was traced back to another co-worker who left her gym bag in the car, which the gym bag was still in the damn car. So it didn't even make, oh no, no, you know what? He actually did, he actually was smart enough to toss it in a dumpster, but he didn't account for the other prostitutes that actually were in the area. One of which was uh, a trans woman. So get, or is it a trans man? I think it's a trans woman. It was a man that um, was, uh, expressing herself as a woman, you know, she was a, she was a prostitute, but that was her like wig clothes. It was a whole get up in the very beginning between her and the police when they first found the guy dead. And she and she was looking good for the, for the crime because she had touched the car, but she only stole the bag to see if there was anything, um, anything of value in it ended up tossing the bag because the wallet wasn't even in there. It, like he had f f a stage a robbery, so nothing of value was there. And when it got to the bag, that led to the coworker whose gym clothes were in there. And that was her lipstick that was on the thing. So it was like, he didn't even plan it out well. It was like so impulsive here, you know, just frantically trying to do something to save his own ass when he just ended up making it worse. And maybe that's the, why I'm saying all this, because that's the energy that we're dealing with now where people are still trying to work on or they have. Maybe that's finally over with the death card here, which is amazing. We're coming to a, a screeching halt, I would say, because this looks like some despair here. Maybe even some jail time or just people being dis disabled. Uh, I was trying to say destabilized, but I don't even know if that's a word, but definitely disabled from their ambitions, diabolically so. But that's the energy people have been in, so insecure about their image that they've been willing to do anything, insecure about his livelihood, about how he would support himself, about being able to still indulge in the lifestyle that he wanted to and maintain the facade of you know, the happy little life, you know, there's a lot of that going around and people are, you'd be, you'd be surprised just as it is. That man was a seasoned attorney or some type of prosecutor or something of high level authority. You'd be surprised what lengths people will go to and think they can actually get away with just to protect their image, just to protect their lifestyle, afraid to have any change or bruise to their, you know, their, their character or their reputation or the high, like I said, the pedestal that they place themselves on. So, uh, yeah, here we go. But look, you can't, you can't fight against karma. That's, that was right there. It was like people trying to fight against against destiny, protect themselves, but they're do protecting themselves in ways that are only intensifying 
the repercussions at this point. It's like you were already going to going to receive a certain cause, a, a certain effect for your own causality. And now with you trying to like almost fix that, like people trying to push against time, push against um, destiny un unfolding and things that are just in natural order to happen as they did before, you know, but still pushing back. You know what I'm saying? It's just making it worse, like creating more blockages for you, more things to have to defend yourself from, more people, more enemies, perhaps, you know, that he, people are creating for themselves when all they really got to do is just live in their damn truth. That's all they ever had to do. That man, he, yeah, he might have been publicly embarrassed. He may have embarrassed his family. Um, coming out as a gay man, may have disappointed a couple of people, maybe hurt his wife, maybe, you know, bruised his kids to some degree. But in the end, he became a whole murderer. That was far worse than just being naturally and organically who you felt you, you know, desirable to be. And cutting people loose from being bruised from the facade otherwise. It's like, like I said, exit signs on every level of the rabbit hole and people still continue to dig themselves deeper. When that man started falling in love with him, that was the that was the opportunity either to cut it off and deal with whatever um, backlash may have come. I don't think the man would have outed him. It didn't seem like he was that volatile, but maybe he was and maybe that's just what needed to be. You know, cause and effect. Or he could have released his wife. You know, have released his family from the lie. From being deceived and misled. And then ultimately infected by his own um, irresponsibility. Because his data wasn't even, was quite outright not using and intentionally not using protection. Because that was too much admittance that they were doing something wrong if they had to actually protect themselves so it's crazy yo. crazy crazy up oh, here's the queen of wands over here <laughs> the only feminine energy on the board and it's like i don't even know what to say about that about her i don't even know what to say None the wiser. She over here looking off into the future, maybe planning the next 10 years of their lives together. Whole time he over here with literally Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Peter, and Paul, and James, and John. <laughs> oh, jeez. Mm. And you know, I don't mean no shade because all are welcome here. But I do mean shade, as I've said before, with people that intentionally put others in harm's way. And look, that is the harm's way. It's like the wands he was playing with now became her her problem, became her, you know, became almost like a, were weaponized against her. And she was over here minding her business, didn't even know none of that was going on. And now his karma has become her karma and in a way. So that's certainly a um, a message in that regard, like to be mindful who you're hooking up with, because the Queen of Wands is attractive. You know, she's that she's that girl when it comes to sensuality and sexual. And the one, and his wife was beautiful. She was a beautiful black woman. But you like what you like, you know. You like what you like, and you cannot, even if it is an impure or a perverted passion, you know, To and I'm not saying that homosexuality is, but I'm just saying, like, you still would have to engage the truth of those origins without shame, without guilt, without insecurity to decide whether it's something that you are accepting of or that is an opportunity for release or healing from. Because we know that some some 
um, sexual deviances are on account of uh, unfavorable experiences as a child. And I'm not saying that that's exclusive to homosexuality because look, the queen of wands is out here and we know in, in the inverted energy, she can be a piece of work, you know, one that will use her body to, um, to, to, to her advantage, whatever that looks like, you know. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's like the only way to your truth is through it. You can't, you can't curb it. You can't suppress it. I mean, you can, we all have that choice, but eventually it, it bubbles up to the surface in one way, shape or form, because it's a part of you. It's who you are. It's, it's natural. And as I said, if you, if you, if it's something that you don't like, then you got to get to the root of why you don't like it, why that that's not acceptable for you and your own skin. And is that on account of projection or societal standards or family expectations or, you know, appearances or whatever the case may be, um, preservation of your, your, uh, your, your public persona, whatever it is, like all of that is up to the person to decipher and designate because otherwise living in, in a lie will almost always drive you to do things either to yourself or to others that you'll live to regret one way or another. Nobody can live in the shadows forever, and certainly not now. Cer you just might as well go ahead and bust on up out the closet in whatever way, shape, and form, and be you, and, you know, take all the scrutiny or not, really let it roll off your back if you can, because as, as it was expressed here and in that episode, you do yourself a greater disservice trying to put on a happy face for others than you do to just take, take it on the chin being yourself. And you hurt less people by living in your truth ultimately and, and, and in the end than you do trying to maintain some lie that's when you do monopolize and manipulate other people's power. Like even in the case with the wife, the wife could have been free probably a long time ago, maybe even before they had a child, to live in her truth with a man that truly wanted to be with her exclusively. But he captivated her energy to suit his own desires for normalcy or the appearance of such and then in the end absolutely actually physically infringed upon her her physical energy by passing on the disease to her and that happens whether it be as as i've been speaking about that can happen in the physical form but it certainly can happen in the spiritual form if there's no transmission of disease um uh, detectable. Sometimes the spiritual transmission of energies is far more detrimental, damaging, and hard to release, be released from or release yourself from, cure, let's say, than anything. So people are going to have to, you know, find their own healing now and stop rel relying on other people to kind of be the salve or the um you know the the soothing force of their degeneration if that's the word that i'm looking for now everybody's got to take that real look in the mirror and decide how they or look into their spiritual bank account and really account for those coins <laughs> that they have and how you know, what's the, the true value of their currency now? What's it truly worth? What can it get you? As the dollar is depreciating day by day, that's the same inflection on lies and illusions 
that people have been storing up as their true identity for lifetimes. People are going to be about bankrupt before they will ever build a fortune off of lies anymore. So, all right, that was kind of weird, but I'm gonna let it rock. <laughs> um yeah so thank you for listening thank you for watching until next time as always i leave you with peace